Well, we did a nice job of staying efficient. Right? We played these guys last year. Uh, had probably 13 or 14 what we would call get back on track down in distances, second and nine plus, first and 15. We had four of them yesterday, uh, the fourth one being – you know, the second and 12 at the end of the game where we ended up punting on third and, and 10. So just pointing to the efficiency, and you can see that when we're able to get into drives um, as opposed to getting into a drive, having a second and five, having a false start, making it second and 10, not having a positive play, third and 10, and then it's just really um, tough from there. Um, had the sacks, you know, a lot of those – uh, we're, we're on third down, and, and those longer yardages, you know, one's on a screen. Ryan knows he is good. we got to find an, a place to get rid of the football at the, you know, heels of the running back or heels of the lineman with the running back somewhere near there. So, um, you know, one, they, they had a pressure. We need to, you know, kind of block whoever shows, and one guy dropped, one guy came. Uh, the, the TEs, you know, the games, right, that's something, right, that's going to have to continue to, to get improvement. You know, our ability to work with the guy next to us, whether that be on the offensive line and coverage in the secondary, like that, that is something that we're going to continue to focus on. Uh, it's our communication with the guy next to us who we're working with. Uh, but that that's something that showed up. But there was also some some really good plays, some really good pockets that allowed us to, to throw the ball downfield. We were efficient in the run game. You know, so it's easy to point, you know, to those. Um, and we don't we don't want those. We can't have those. Obviously, you know, don't want to get the quarterback hit. Don't want bad things to happen when he does get hit. What do you think about first down? It seemed like run pass balance was, was pretty interesting, and and Derek Spears' balance was pretty interesting. Yeah, it's just it's all about getting into the to, to plays and drives and being able to allow some of those personnel groups to to complement each other. Right, you go in with a package, and you know, just trying to continue to expand on some of those things and. You know, getting guys the touches and the carries and the and the throws that they need, and, and still trying to, you know, take care of the football and and, and doing all that. And I thought that the, the there was a good flow. We were able to run the football. We worked uh, some some tempo. We we hit a big play. We got on the ball. Um, you know, got a lot of our stuff run. I still think it. You know, there's can be a a lot better execution and and try to limit some of the mistakes. I guess just more specifically on the Derek. Tajay, uh, I guess carries and, and snap counts and all that. Did that play out kind of uh, ideally for you as far as how they both did? Their Just want them both to be productive, and, and we know that you know Derek's going to have to get his touches, and you know Tajay can clearly help us as well. You know, so you know whether it's too little, too much. You know, I mean, I sat in here before Derek rushed for two thousand yards, and he was getting it too many times. I, I don't know what to tell you. With Tajay, how do you like the way? Because it seemed like he was. You guys are chuckling. You're the ones that asked the questions. <laughs> with, with Spears, it seemed like he was running through a lot of the tackles. How do you hey, like we're we're going to block for him one day, I promise you. And he's going to gain 30, 40, 50 yards. I'm not sure. But I, he, every time you think he's going to get tackled, he bursts through for another five or six yards. And so, you know, again, he got good vision, good balance, you know, good play strength. Um, well executed uh, call there. Uh, Justin helped Timmy out there in overtime that first drive. He said, "Hey, I want want this play. I think we're, we got him set up for it." Um, heard Justin talking to Timmy. Timmy led off the drive. We got a good seal block. Uh, Dre got around and you know got us you know, some great yardage there to to get us across the fifty and and, and eventually kick that that field goal. So. Um, they, they both are going to help us, and um, you know we, we got to make sure that we're continuing to get both of those guys the ball. Defensively, where are you at coverage-wise? I mean, you give up 300 yards passing, but they're also two for 14 on third down. Those two things don't. It's going to be better on first and second down, Corey. It just got to, you know, we had the, the the one, you know, over our head, you know, and, and empty. Um, had had a seam ball on cover three, which. You know, if it's cover three and it's two by two, you know, we have to know, like, just take away the seam. And if they hit us with something else, you know, then they hit us with something else. But we got to make sure that that's taken care of. You know, they had another seam to a big, long tight end with, you know, three missed tackles. I mean, we only had eight missed tackles. The three of them were on one play. It just continues to be defensively 
just a small handful of plays that if you could have back could be really cool. We get down there, they're going fast. Some, somebody makes a check. Somebody, whether they should or shouldn't, not everybody gets it. And it's an easy, it's an easy, you know, touchdown. So some of the keys that we talked about, you can see them, you know, play out right in front of our eyes. And uh, when we when we nail them, and the players execute it, you know, it goes well. Ryan mentioned yesterday that Kier's ten yards on the punt return was a, was a good addition to give them give you the field position needed on the field goal drive at the end. How's he done, and how important is it that he's been able to fill two roles for you doing both the kickoffs and the punt? Well, great example, complimentary football there in overtime. You know, three and out. You know, fourth and ten, which now allows us to to go with a seven man. You know, lighter box, double one of the gunners. All week we knew how important just simply catching these punts from Scott was going to be. It's gonna be. Unbelievable hang time, the sun. You saw that. Like that was. I told the team. I said, you guys are more than welcome to, you know, apply for that job on Sunday. And. So that was a huge part of the game plan was, you know, Kyrus just coming up and catching those punts with guys in traffic right there in front of him. Uh, this opportunity presented itself with not a great kick, but good, uh, good job on the holdup and, and 10 yards that now we don't have to get offensively when we need to go down there and kick a field goal. So just a great example of complimentary football, three and out, fourth and 10. 10 yards on a, on a punt return, and then the offense uh, doing what they needed, and then the, the kicking unit uh, going out there and doing what they needed to do to win a football game. Just curious, uh, what went a decision to kick on third down? Was it want to avoid a hold, holding, maybe wonder about the rain? Trying to wait out the rain, and then it started coming harder, and I'm like, is it going to get harder? Is it going to stop? What, like, how long is this going to last? And um, that's kind of why we just said, Let, let's kick it. You know, they were all down there. They led 11 guys at the line of scrimmage, and nothing good could come of it. You didn't throw uh, outside the numbers a lot. Was that a plan, or was that what they were dictating to you? I'm just curious if that was kind of in in the moment or or something that was kind of – Throughout the game? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think – do you count the 70-yarder to trailing outside the numbers? He ran down the numbers. We threw it down the field. Um End of the game, we threw it outside the numbers to Hopkins basically to win the game. Uh, so those are two examples that, again, when we did throw it out there, uh, worked out pretty well for us. You mentioned your sacks on, on, on offense on third down, but defensively all three of your sacks came on third down. How big was that for you guys? Well, it, again, it get, with the key to, to playing the, the Chargers and a team with you know, an offense that they have was simply to get the drive stopped, whether that was third or then fourth down. We know that... They, they would have a, an ability to go for it on fourth down. We did not get it stopped on fourth down, but we did, you know, at least get it stopped two out of the five times in the red zone. So part of getting a drive stopped against these guys this week was on third and fourth down and in the red zone. And I think that the guys understood that, that when they got down there, um, at least we were able to, to, to make them kick field goals on, a, on, on three of those opportunities. Their sacks all killed your drives that kind of a message to, to drive home? Well, those are all, you know, I mean, I think all on third down, right? That whether we, the, the sack, you know, I mean, whether we convert it or not, it, it, the, the sack is what everybody's going to look at. And whether we had guys open, whether we had guys coming free in a pass rush, certainly the one on, uh, on the fourth down did have that. Um, but it's, it's all about getting open quicker, snapping down in zone, quarterback knowing where he wants to go protection holding up like yeah it's easy just to sit there and say the protection it has to be better on third down when we know that they're in a you know pass rush mode we're expecting pressure or we're expecting games and and that's what you get on third down when, when, when did you know that you're gonna be without peter i guess what's the timetable on coming back from that procedure and if you didn't know about him until late how much of a challenge did that put on the staff to to plug in somebody that maybe hadn't been out there? Well, uh, I would say that uh, sometime Saturday afternoon, you know, probably became aware of that. The staff, I mean, we're it, it's on the players, you know. I mean, the staff was, you know, we'll just make sure that the next guy's ready and they pr practiced and X, you know, started with him and, you know, give a lot of credit to Dylan to be able to jump in there. Um, 
you know, being out eight and a half months, it's it's impressive feat uh, for him to play over 50 snaps that he did and and play him fairly well. So, again, uh, the concern is about Peter and, and his health, and and you know, the staff will will be fine. Did he have a procedure? He did have a procedure, so he'll be, uh, and we'll keep you updated on, on when he'll be back out there. Mike, it seems like when Dylan came in, the offense. Protection was better. He ran the ball a little bit better. Obviously, scored points after that. Was that coincidence? Did he make a huge difference up front? Well, he, he had some good blocks. I mean, I just you know I, I I probably overlooked his first play in there, but if you, you know, talking to 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 Haas, said he he drove his guy six or seven yards whenever it was his first play in there. So um, I didn't have a chance to go back and look at it after after meeting with the coaches. Just. Um, so I'll take his word for it until I go, you know, back and watch the tape. But again, it wasn't without mistake. But I think there was probably more good plays than bad plays. How do you evaluate your punting? The sixty-yarders with the five, you know, four or five hang time. Just, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, they got some returns out of that. You got some risk in that. I mean, you want is that, is that <laughs> what you're looking for? I mean, I, we'll see if we can get them sixty. Outside the numbers, a little bit more hang time, but you know we got it. Either we're 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 gonna we're gonna bang them, and we're gonna cover them. Like we're gonna get guys. Like we should have guys that go down there and find a football. Forty-four yard net average against a really good returner. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what you're working here. Because obviously good. you have the you know the risk of the return. There there was a lot of. You know, space after some of the yeah, no, we had a risk of kicking off down there in New Orleans, too, and then Hooker made a play and caused a fumble. So, I I don't I don't know. I think Stoney backed up. I think he, again, maybe we can move the ball over a little bit. we got to cover as best as we can. We've been through this. We, we're going to have to cover more ground, cover longer than you think. You know, it's, it's a race to 50 yards. And yeah, I mean, there's a risk in anything that you do, but we should be able to cover those kicks, especially when we get single pressed. Ryan's two longest passes in New Orleans and air yards both intercepted. Then yesterday comes back to airing it out a little bit, finds Traylon, finds Chris. How important is it for a quarterback to have confidence to go back to things like that? Well, yeah, you're going to have to throw the ball down the field. You're going to have to be able to create some X plays and not have to churn them out. So. And we'll have to continue to throw them and trust our receivers to to get separation and if not go up and make the foot go up and make a play on the ball and, and give them an opportunity so that um those are two huge plays i mean trailing i don't think trailing's had a bigger play for us i mean i'm sure he has but the, where the situation was um in the game you know needing a spark needing a huge play to, to come back and answer Yeah, I mean, I thought Trey competed. You know, I thought he battled. I think he had the one early third down. They kind of, you know, went down there, bodied him up, pushed him off, whatever you want to call it. But remained competitive. He challenged him down the field. He had some PBUs. He competed. Um, so, you know, had the DPI where they, you know, big balled him, you know, jumped up and, you know, big boyed him. But he competed. Had no issues with his competitiveness. And he actually um, – you know, had some PBUs down the field when they did challenge him. Uh, Mike was Mike was good. Mike was solid. Would would like to see him come out with that interception and go and make it a play. You know, but some of these guys haven't played a lot of football. You know, so however long it's been, you know, Elijah, however, you know, Mike hasn't played a ton. Trey, you know, these it's great opportunities for these guys. It seemed like the Chargers kind of challenged the DBs a little bit to tackle on the perimeter. Just how'd you feel like they did in that regard? I mean, they had a 15-yard gain and an average two yards of carry. I, don't, I mean, I, that's we, we got to stop the pass a little better. Mike, I know it's just Monday, but are you hoping to have uh, Fulton and Hooker back this week? Uh, we'll see where they are, you know, heading into Wednesday. And I would say hopeful at this point in time, but just being Monday, you know, Monty's got to pass through the the protocol, uh, and then we'll see where Christian's at. With the body and, and with 
you've got the Guardian caps that you said statistical data <coughs> shows that they work. Is it time to explore using something like that in games for some guys who, who've had issues, if it can protect them more? I'm, I'm all for exploring whatever is best for the player and their health and safety now and, and in the long term. That That's what I'm for. Uh, Caleb Farley, Ben, you know, he's back in the Yeah, uh, an unbelievable attitude, uh, demeanor. Really just impressed by how he's been able to handle all this. And, you know, saw him again here this morning, uh, rehabbing. Um, you know, been through a lot. And, uh, but by all accounts, you know, he's doing well. He's working hard to get back. And, you know, obviously dealing with everything that he's having to deal with outside of football and his own personal health. So uh, appreciate you asking about him. Uh, looks great physically, you know, just waiting for, you know, things to progress here with the, with the back and um, his rehab. I can't practice all week like DeAndre was last week. Uh, how much do you have to be convinced when he tests it out that – he's good to go and that he can give you what you need despite not being able to practice. Well, I think Hop would be one of those players where you've kind of, you know, trust his judgment, you know, having been with him in the past and, and Tim being with him, you know, did some stuff with him on Saturday and, you know, when we needed him, he was there. You know, I know that the production uh, statistically isn't going to stick out, but three to four catches for a first down, huge, huge, Conversions and then the the one there at the end that uh, that really put us in the field goal range. One of your keys defensively, I think, as long as you've been here, is stop the run. Do you feel pretty good about what you've done the first two weeks in that regard? And specifically yesterday, it seemed like you got a lot of help from like Roger McCreary coming up and KB coming up. Is that yeah? Well, KB had game? you know, I mean, he you know, he had one of his better tackling games. Was, was really had a huge stop there on third down, and some of the coverages that you play dictate that. Um, you know, the nickel or somebody has to kind of has to trigger in there from from off of the slot, um, whether you're, you know, in split safety defense. So those guys were, were willing, uh, did did trigger, um, you know, like I said, didn't have a ton of missed tackles, had had eight, you know, and three were on one play. So guys were getting there. They were limiting, limiting the, the yards. Uh, after contact, especially the one there with KB uh, on third down and four. What have you made of the play from your tight ends so far this season? Well, uh, probably inconsistent. You know, a couple false starts yesterday, but you know, Chig had some some, some nice catches, um, done well at times, and again, you know, tough matchup yesterday at times with with Khalil Mack. Um, but I, I would say that inconsistent, you know, just looking for a little better consistency and, you know, maybe just knowing who who we're trying to block, you know, and, and how they may jump around and our ability to, to, to keep our eyes up and adjust to that, knowing the play style uh, of them. So, but I'm confident in that group and I know that they'll they'll work hard and we'll, we'll continue to work them all in there. What prep work look like for the Browns? They play one game and they play tonight. Is we have to wait and kind of get no, I think we'll like... get a jump on them. I think we'll we'll get a jump on them. We'll have to do that. Um, you know, and then we'll watch how tonight goes. And certainly they got off to a good start um, last week. And then we'll see you know, where they're at tonight. It'll be a huge challenge on the road, like it always is, uh, against a talented football team. When you've got a coach who just left, like Jim coming against you, how much insight does he have into how you, say, protect and what can he bring to, to attacking your philosophy? Well, I would say that that's – a lot of that is different. A lot of that has been changed and, you know, but Jim's, uh, you know, been around a long time, is really good football coach, so I'm sure he'll have a great plan and, and ways to, to put their players in the best position. Oh, well, look tonight where you're, the team you're playing next is playing on a night you're off. Do you guys watch it as a team, as a staff? Do you watch it individually? Just kind of how do you handle games like that? Uh, I think it'll probably be uh, – sure, our players will watch. I'm not sure what they're doing. We're not 
doing anything uh, formal. Uh, coaches, you know, may you know sit in there and watch. We'll also probably be getting ready, trying to you know game plan or take a look at first and second down or whatever it may be, and you know have it on. It, it's tough to really get. You know, you can get some things live, uh, but. Hopefully we'll just get our prep work in and then, you know, see where the, the film is in the morning. Did you get a chance to watch the, uh, I guess, the, the uh, pregame when the responders were out there and just what was your maybe thoughts on that? And well, I mean, just having talked with those, you know, those men, you see how young they are and just, you know, really appreciated what they did for our city. And, uh, you know, they just, uh, you know, called to action, you know, being able not to, not to waver, not to, to flinch, and we all say, "Hey, if we were never in that position," but you know, rarely are we ever in that position. And their ability to to go in there and save countless lives, and you know, try to comprehend how um, your training, their training, specific training is to in the first, you know, an active shooter is to bypass individuals like that. That's crazy for for me to even try to understand. And they even talked about it like. This is un like it doesn't seem right, but I know that I have to. This is what I have to do for, for everybody else. And so, you know, we're thankful that they um, they showed courage and bravery, and uh, anything that we can do as, as an organization to to recognize them and honor them, I'm I'm excited to do. That's it. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks. Have a good day. Yeah, definitely. Uh, every game, there's definitely stuff we want to correct and stuff, but it's a lot easier after a win. Just. Uh, get in here, everybody. I mean, obviously that was a huge, huge win, huge momentum uh, for us going into next week. So trying to keep that rolling, but it makes all the bumps and bruises you got in the game, all the things you got that you might have messed up. It it feels a little bit better when you win. So, yeah, vibes are definitely better. How has the process been for you? You know, going from an undrafted guy last year to now a starter in, in a pretty good defense. Yeah, that's something. Uh, ever since I got here, I feel like. Uh, Coach Vrabel always preaches, it doesn't matter how you got here, it's about what you do when you get here. So it's been a journey, obviously, last year, getting cut, being on the practice squad, then finally getting an opportunity to get into play, and then this year in a completely different role. So uh, just trying to keep the same process that I had uh, since I got here, just kind of get better every day, put my head down, keep working, and uh, starting to starting to uh, try to take it to the next level. So it feels good, though. The Stars were 244 yards last week, and, and I think you guys held them I mean, is that – how do you explain how you guys are able to do that against everybody? I mean, that's something we hang our hat on around here, is trying to stop the run. I mean, that, that's the where it all starts on defense. And we got a really good front, uh, Jeff and Tier and Harold and Arden, Danico, all those guys up front. They, they do an awesome job. Uh, they're super, super talented up there, super physical, and it's something that people got to worry about and uh, allows us as linebackers to, to flow over the top, make some plays. and. Uh, yeah, that's something that we always, always going to be first and foremost, but it's something that we take a lot of pride in. Do you feel like teams give up on it pretty quickly? Like they test you early and they go, yeah, that's not going to work. I mean, a lot of t uh, most teams, when they come into a game, they want to establish the run so the play action can, uh, can play off of that. But yeah, we try to take that away early so that way they got to do something different. But um, yeah, definitely something that, especially early on in the game, if you can stop the run, you can kind of put them into a position where they're going to throw it a lot more. And our, our guys up front, like we said, are really good. And getting, giving them the opportunity to go rush can, uh, can definitely help a lot if we stop the run early. Do you like the Chargers? They put a lot of speed on the field. And yesterday, there was one play in particular where you chased down the running back in the flat, kind of dragged him down by the arm. What's the challenge for you when you go against those teams that put a lot of speedy players out there at once? Yeah, they're they're fat. They they have a lot of team speed, and they also go fast with the tempo. So uh, it's definitely a challenge. And they they're trying to get their guys out in space, playing a lot of the numbers games with the RPOs, either handing it off or throwing it out on the perimeter. Uh, it's just about trusting your leverage, trusting the guys around you to be where they're supposed to be, and uh, just running and trying to make plays out there. But when it's numbers like that, guys are going to have to run sideline to sideline. We're going to have to swarm. So. Uh, yeah, just in those games, we just got to make sure everybody's running to the ball and uh, not expecting someone else to make the play. So far, and, and kind of what influence has he has he been on you? Yeah, it's been awesome uh, getting to work with Aziz ever since he's gotten here. Uh, He's been just a great veteran presence for us, kind of as a leader, showing us the way, um, and also just kind of the standard that he's been a part of over in San Francisco, with especially at linebacker play. They've been kind of in the tops at linebacker play in the league for several years now, so kind of bringing over that mentality. 
and uh, just kind of getting to learn a lot from him about how they do things, how he approaches things, his mindset uh, has been awesome and has helped me out a lot for sure. Let's talk about how yesterday so much of the emphasis was just get off the field when you can. How do you guys heighten that when it's third down? What do you guys do to make sure that sort of thing happens? I mean, that's something that uh, every game, like obviously, there's good players on both sides of the ball and they're going to make plays. So we talk, try to talk about no matter if it's a good play, bad play, we got to play the next play. No matter what happened, uh, can't go back and change it. We just got to get off the field. Uh, a lot of this league comes down to third down and red zone who can execute on offense and defense. So that's something we try to take a lot of pride in and uh, just find a way to get the drive stop. No matter what happens, They yesterday they hit a couple big plays, but we buckle down and find a way to get off the field in the end. So that's something that we definitely work on a lot. I'm always curious to know in week one, week two of a season, uh, how much did you see on Sunday that you weren't necessarily prepared for or, or wasn't expecting to see? I mean, that's kind of how it goes. Every uh, every week, teams are going to put in a couple new wrinkles. They're going to see something from a different game that they liked. and. Uh, stuff that's worked against us will usually continue to show up until we until we get it stopped. So always going to be some of that, but that's where you just got to kind of go back to the fundamentals, go back to your rules, and uh, film study can help you out a lot with with uh, what they like to do and stuff. But you got to be able to get through those plays where it's something that you maybe have never seen by just trusting your rules, trusting your fundamentals. What was it like, I guess, for you after you kind of missed your transactions early, but to get cut, I guess, at the end of last August, and now here you are a year later, team starting inside back. I mean, what, what kind of went through your mind when you, uh, at the start of September last year, and how did you get to the point that you are uh, today? Yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. Definitely after training camp got sent home, I drove back to Texas, and then a week later they were calling me back to come back out on the practice squad. And uh, when I got back out here, I just kind of said, I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. They gave me a second chance, and uh, just kind kind of just took the mindset of, I got to get better every day, got to fight to earn it every day. And I still kind of have, that's the same mindset I'm trying to have right now. Everybody's trying to earn their job every day. Nothing's guaranteed in this league. So uh, just make the most of every opportunity you get every time you get to step on the field. What's the challenge for, you know, kind of developing pass coverage you know, for an inside backer? And, and you know, how do you, how do you improve in, in, in that regard? Yeah, I think a lot of it is uh, understanding of schemes, especially what we want to do, but then also how offenses are going to try to attack us, especially when we're in different zone coverages. We play a lot of different types of coverages, match coverages, man, zone, like vision and break coverages. So just kind of knowing every coverage what where they're going to try to hurt us and kind of where the vulnerabilities are because you can't cover everything. So if we can kind of just be aware of what teams like to attack us in when we're in certain coverages and kind of help us defend that a little bit better, it will definitely help. Tonight. Yeah, definitely uh, excited to watch that game kind of just as a casual way to kind of get a jump start on, on the film study before we really dive into it. It'll be good to watch him tonight for sure. He's got to be, I, I don't want to say unique challenge, but I mean, he's, he's a dude. Yeah, definitely. He's been doing it at a really high level for a few years now, and uh, they definitely are going to come in and try to establish the run. So like we said, talking about before, got to be a huge emphasis, uh, especially early. Did you, growing up, did you ever see Rabel wearing 50 when he played for the Patriots? And he ever remind you that that's a, that was his number and there's, that's something to withhold wearing that number? He's never said anything about that. I mean, I knew that that was his number, and it's just the number that was assigned to me when I got here, and I like it. I mean, yeah, we'll roll with it. getting the win and just what it feels like today. But is there also kind of a – we got to reset because we got to get the next one this Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Uh, after a game, we always talk about you got 24 hours, whether you win or you lost. Uh, this league's moving on. It doesn't matter what we did last week or what happened to us two weeks ago. That that uh, has no bearing on how we're going to play next week. So we kind of, after today, we just come in, uh, get your body right and watch the film and make the corrections. But when you go home today, it's on to the next week. Uh, what happened last week's over and we got to get ready to play again. Still, Doctor Shibby, have you had any any degrees, anything like that since your first year? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I haven't really been been doctor too much anymore. It's just Gibby. I don't know what happened. I guess I'm not practicing <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but uh, it's, yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, man, just knowing that uh, it's just nice knowing that we can, you know, have guys, you know, who can win deep, and you know, we can take shots like that because obviously that helps up a lot of stuff, especially with the run game, loosening up the box, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's huge seeing those type of plays happen. Shot to the ribs, and how, how, how was it coming back from that? Yeah, man, it was just uh, had to fight through it. Got a shot to the ribs, um, like the fifth play of the game. You know, just came back, just had to fight through it throughout the game to finish. You play wearing something after that? 
Yeah, just like a rib protector. What's, I guess, uh, from a maturity level, uh, how much has changed for you maybe in year two as far as dealing with the ups and downs maybe of, of plays, mm-hmm. and maybe games? Uh, for me, it's always just trying to, you know, get back to center. You know, whether you have a good game, bad game, bad play, good play, it's always just each play, you know, trying to come back to center, trying to, like, get that refocus so, you know, you can play level-headed. You don't want to play too high. You don't want to play too low because that's when, you know, mistakes start happening. Jake, what do you think started happening on the fourth drive when you guys really started to get in a rhythm that basically continued the rest of the game? Uh, honestly, I think it's just just one play at a time. You know, we just made a made a big play. Traylon made a big play. And then that kind of just, you know, just open up, you know, everybody's confidence from then on, like, you know, like, let's go, like, let's, let's, let's cut it loose and let's, you know, go out and then finish this game. Do you feel like yesterday was the best example yet that we've seen of what this offense has the potential to do? Yeah, I said we only played two weeks, so, yeah, I say yesterday, yeah, it was definitely, you know, a glimpse of what we can do. But there's so many moving pieces, uh, new pieces to this offense. Is it maybe a, a, a good sign that things uh, of, to come potentially? Yeah, I think so. There's just a lot of, you know, pieces on our offense that can, you know, make make a play. You know, there's, there's just so many guys on offense that can make a play. So we're just finding ways, you know, to get us all the ball and just, you know, give us all touches so we can go out there and, you know, and just, you know, make plays. Along those lines, I think there were at least five guys who got at least three targets in the game. The, the mm-hmm. ball distribution was a lot more balanced. How, how important do you think that was to what you guys did yesterday? Yeah, man, just the defense, seeing different guys, you know, get the ball. You know, everybody, we all have different skill set. Like, you know, Tajay is different from Derek, you know. I'm different from Wiley, you know, different guys, you know, just touch it in different ways, you know, just keeps the defense on their toes, making sure they have to defend everybody and, you know, have to worry about everybody on the field, you know, at all, at all times. It doesn't take a lot of patience, though. I mean, I'm sure you want more targets as a pass catcher, but does it take a lot of patience just to be able to go through and, and not do too much or try to do too much when you finally do get those targets? Well, when I get my targets, I'm trying to do the most, but um, – yeah, man. Uh, you just gotta you just gotta wait for your number to be called, and then when when your number does get called, you know you gotta be ready for that opportunity, and then make it happen. And when I say not do too much, I'm talking about like pressing. Like you know, sometimes you'll try to run before you catch any of yeah. those type of things. Yeah, you just gotta like I said, like just refocus on every play. You just gotta you know remain focused on that moment. You know, catch the ball first when it comes to you, then run. You know, you just just don't look too ahead because obviously that's when mistakes happen. How good was it to, uh, to see Ryan kind of bounce back yesterday? have a strong game after the week one performance? It was, uh, it was really good. It was, I mean, it's what we all expected. We all knew it was going to happen. We didn't see it any other way. But it's real good to, you know, see him go out there and make a lot of great passes and lead us. What do you know about the Browns so far? How do you handle what you watch, uh, I guess, tonight live? Yeah. Um, I think they they got a lot of blitz in their team, a lot of blitzes. And then they obviously have, you know, good edge rushers, Miles Garrett. Uh, so it'll be a good challenge. A couple minutes ago, Vrabel said uh, of the tight end group as a whole that he just felt like it's, it's been a little bit inconsistent. What do you think you guys can do more consistently as a group? Uh, just eliminate our unforced errors and then just with our landmarks in the run game, uh, just our combos, things like that. Talking about Miles Garrett there, Vrabel was saying that it was a bit of a challenge for you guys with Khalil Mack yesterday. Just how do you guys feel like as a tight end room you, you handled those edge rushers they had? Uh, it was a BFA battle all game. You know, we won some. You know, we lost some. You know, they're great players on their edge. You know, getting with the Chargers, you respect them. Um, I think we we took the fight to them, and uh, we did a good job. You guys, good.